Let's think about preparing a multimedia presentation. What do you do first? Well, perhaps having an idea at the start would be very helpful. To start blindly with no direction will waste time and paper and become very frustrating. If you are collaborating with others, arrange a meeting to discuss what you're going to do, who will be responsible for what, and start drawing up a plan. Following your meeting, start to develop the plan by putting more details into it. The more detail you include, then the easier it will be to create the presentation. You'll know exactly what to do at each point in the presentation. It would also be a good idea to think about what software and hardware resources you will need and draw up a list. Storyboards are a great way to plan out how your presentation will run, but you may have to create your own template. Create a table with three columns and four rows. The first and third rows will be large, for example 60mm, and the second and fourth rows smaller, for example 25mm. To make the storyboard, write or sketch your ideas in the large boxes across the row. Do them in the order you want the scenes to happen and make notes about what is happening in the smaller boxes below. The notes could relate to the scene, animations, transitions, sound effects, narrations and music used. An alternative would be to use post-it notes, which you can get in many different sizes. You can place them in the order you want on the template or on the wall. The benefit is you can reorder them, create and insert new ones very quickly and easily. You can reformat your storyboard many times over until you're happy with it. We can also use time lapse. The time lapse sequence is one where a picture is taken after a certain amount of time has passed. It can be used to speed up slow processes like the growth of a plant. Here I've told the computer to take a single frame every three seconds. To show how to make the table, we use the word processor and screen capture software to create a video clip. Sometimes things go wrong with the plan and you have to find a different solution. The animation software I needed could not do what I wanted it to do. So I took a series of snapshots out of these different video streams and processed them in GIMP. Two images of me were cut out of their original frames and layered onto a background with another me. 20 times. New images were brought into Movie Maker and played back at high speed to show movement. It's a bit like stop frame animation. Stop frame animation is where you take single pictures of an image or object, but each one is slightly different. When you play them back together, you see an animated object. Adding a narration is what I'm doing right now. Putting in a voice to describe what is happening or explain something. It is best to write a script to read from first. It saves many mistakes and edits. You can see the added soundtracks on the right of the screen. Filing structure. You need to consider how you will store your files to make them easier to find. Bring them into one place if they're not already there and sort into order of type. Create a series of folders and move the files into the new folders. This will ensure that you're not wasting time looking for files. Now it is time to start bringing your files together. Go into your file structure and start to load the video sequences and still images that you saved or prepared earlier. You can set animations to bring your sequences smoothly into view. You can also use pan and zoom effects to give life to still images. To add a narration, make sure you have your script to hand, select record narration and then press record. 
When you're finished, you press stop, or if you make an error, press cancel. You can add music from a number of sources. Some are free, some require payment. You can also insert your own. Respect copyright at all times and only use music in a way authorised by the copyright owner. You can insert a title at the start of your film or at the beginning of sections. You can also insert captions. They appear as an overlay on the film. Finally, you can insert credits, a list of who has been involved in creating the film, and they appear at the end. Finally, you have to save your work. As you go along, the work should be saved as a project file. This does not change any of your source files. To make the final film, you must think about where and how the film will be viewed. Select an appropriate file format and size to the final work. When this is done, you can publish your work.